All right, now we in uh, the book of Jeremiah, uh, right here, Jeremiah. We're going to go to uh, chapter 34, and we're going to start at verse uh, 15, right here. Okay. And you were now turned and had done right in my sight in proclaiming liberty, every man to his neighbor, and ye had made a covenant before me in the house of which is called by my name. Now you have to know who uh, Jer Jeremiah, who, who was also called Jeremiah, is talking to. And I asked some people this. I said, who is he talking to here? What house is he talking to? Okay. Uh, you know, you're not going to get a straight answer. One guy tried to tell me that this was talking about Israel and Judah because in, in other earlier verses it talks about uh, the uh, our forefathers uh, a covenant with your fathers in the day that I brought them forth out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bond, bond men, okay? But he's just talking about what he did in the past. He's not talking to our forefathers because they're already dead and gone. If you read on down, you're going to see what house this is, okay? He says, and I will make you to be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. That's what he did to the tribe of Yahudah, Okay? Now you read on down, it's going to say the princes of Yahuda, which they changed it to Judah, okay? And the princes of Jerusalem, which is Jerusalem, that's the, the this was the tribe that was living in Jerusalem at the time, okay? And even, even here in verse 21, and Zedekiah, king of Yahuda, and his princes will I give into the hand of their enemies, okay? Telling you who, who he is talking to here. So this is the house that he's talking to. So when you read where it says the house which is called by my name, the house that's called by his name is the house or tribe of Yahudah. So this just further helps us to understand what the Heavenly Father's name is so that we'll know not to take it in vain. Just so happened, uh, Yahudah, has the same letters in it in the Hebrew as Yasha Yahu, Yerim Yahu, Abed Yahu, Zechar Yahu, and so on. Now I also had someone try to argue with me about the name the word Yahuda, and they say that if you you're saying that this person was named after the Heavenly Father and that this person has the father's name, then why come is one of the Hebrew letters taken out? The letter uh the hay right here is taken out, and then the letter Dalet is put in place of it, which gives you the Yahuda. What, what, and they wanted to know what happened to this letter. And I explained to them that this is called conjunction. It's like the word hue, and you have the word man. It equals human. And notice that the E is removed from the word hue. A human, by the way, is a person of color. A human being. People who don't have hue or color is not human. They may be a man, but they're not human. Okay? The same way with Yahuwah and the, the word Da in the Hebrew, which means praise. You got Yahuwah and Da. You put them together when you use conjunction, just like here, you get the Yahuda. Okay? Now I'm uh, recording the definition for the word conjunction. And we want to focus our attention on the fourth definition. As you see right here. Okay? Uh, an uninflicted linguistic form. Okay? that joins together sentences, clauses, phrases, or words. Okay? That's what, that's how you get Yahuda. Okay? If you can see that. I'm trying to get close as I can without it getting blurry. If I get too much closer, it's going to get blurry. There it is. Nice and clear for you right there. That's high def right there. Alright. So we got a uh, like I was saying earlier about the prophets uh, in the in your Strong's Concordance, 3470, you're going to get Yashiyah, and it'll give you that R, and you got to go all the way to 
the rest of it. You got to get all of it. See there? I'm going to give you the Yasha Yahoo, okay? Which means uh, Yah has saved. It's a get saved job, but it's actually Yasha Yahoo. And you're going to have your, your, your Hebrew letters right there, okay? Yasha Yahoo, all right? And you, we also know him as Isaiah. They give you the colon and the dash, which is telling you of the words that really mean this. Isaiah's real name in the Hebrew, Yasha Yahoo. Now we're on uh, 3414 in the Strong's Concordance in the Hebrew section. We're looking at the person that's also called Jeremiah. His name in the Hebrew, there's the Hebrew letters there, is Yerim Yahu. See there? He's got the Yahoo there too. Okay? Now we're in the uh, Strong's Concordance, Hebrew section in the back. 5662. Uh, this is uh, Obadiah's name in the Hebrew. Obadiah's name in the Hebrew, Abed Yahu. See? Abed Yahu. All right. Now we are in uh, 2148. 2148. Um, this is Zechariah's name in the Hebrew. Zechariah's name is Zechariahu. See that? Zechariahu. So, when you read in Deuteronomy chapter 18, starting at verse 15, all the way down to verse 22, when it says, when it talks about the prophet, it's talking about all of the prophets that he's most of the prophets that he sent anyway if not if not all of them uh, verse 22 it says we're in Deuteronomy chapter uh, 18 verse 22 when a prophet speaketh in the name of Yahuwah when a prophet not the prophet or the prophet that I will send is any prophet okay when a prophet speaketh in the name of Yahuwah if the thing follow not nor come to pass that is the thing which Yahuwah hath not spoken but the prophet that has spoken it presumptuously, thou shalt not be afraid of him. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to go up to uh, verse 18. Because we've got to remember the reason why he's having to send them a prophet anyway. Because they was afraid. They didn't want him to have to speak to them. They wanted, they would rather have someone else speak than to have Yahuwah himself speak. Okay. So he says, okay. Uh, they have uh, well spoken okay that's in verse 17 okay verse 18 <clears throat> I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren like unto thee I will put my words in his mouth and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him uh, verse 19 and it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words which he shall speak in my name okay I will require of them Verse 20, but the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, see, in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. See, they spoke in the name of Yahuwah. They had the name of Yahuwah in their name. They was named after Yahuwah. Yahuwah was like their surname. Okay? So, even more proof, we got we got the prophets with the name Yahuwah. We got the tribe of Yahuda named after him, the house which called by his name. Okay, even in your Strong's Concordance, they show you the, the Hebrew letters. They just pronounce them different. They couldn't change the Hebrew letters because back then everybody read Hebrew. They would have known. That's like someone trying to take Jesus out of the New Testament and put, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, Mark Anthony or... or or uh, calling them, uh, let me think of a name, a stupid one, uh, uh, Billy Bob. You know, you take Jesus out and put Billy Bob in there, everybody's going to know. Well, well, wait a minute. Now, we was just reading where it said Jesus, and now you changed it to Billy Bob. Okay, so the, the, the Meserite, the, the Meserite scribes, when they was uh, transliterating, because they wasn't translating, they was transliterating. Because when you transliterate, that gives you the ability to change certain names. Like how they did when they transliterated the Hebrew scriptures to English. So, when they transliterated into the English, they changed all kind of names. But while they was uh, 
writing in the Hebrew script, they had to follow the Hebrew. They had to follow the Hebraic script. They had to. It's just like we all read English right now. You have to you have to write the correct names in English, okay? But if you change into another language, you can transliterate. And you can change names and nobody will know because they can't read that language. That's also why they had what is called the slave codes. Do you research on that? Slave codes. The slave codes are put in place to keep us from reading the English and, and, and keep us from uh, learning the truth and learning the name. Okay? So, all of that, yes, all of that, I had to get into all of that just to know what that particular commandment really meant when it said thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. You have to know what his name is and I gave you plenty of proof, plenty of scripture as to why I believe what his name is. Okay. Uh, let's see. I went over Jeremiah chapter 34 verses 15 through 22. The house is called by his name. We went over Deuteronomy chapter 18 verses uh, 15 through 22. Any prophet descent in his name. Okay. Uh, even when uh, when Yahuda was born, he was named after uh, Yahuwah. Uh, I'll give you a scripture for that right quick. That's in Genesis chapter 29 verse uh, 35 Genesis 29 35 and she conceived again and bare a son and said now will I praise Yahuwah says the Lord but I already showed you in the Strong's Concordance number 3068 when you see the Lord that means those four Hebrew letters is pronounced Yahuwah or Yahuwah okay and the Da in the name Yahudah is praise I can show you uh some more on that and maybe get into this fourth commandment very important okay we got the 3034 which is the yada yada all right all right the hands the throw rear rear or worship so it's like she's saying now I will worship Yahoo so you got the yada as the worship, okay, intense to be moan, okay, confess, praise, shoot, give, thank, okay, so the yada, the da is the praise, okay. So yeah, all of that is what will help us to make sure that we don't break that cov that covenant commandment right there. Uh, so when you read, Thou shalt not take the name of Yahuwah thy power in vain, for Yahuwah will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. There's a lot to that one little commandment. So on to the fourth commandment. Uh, verse 8, we in Exodus chapter 20, verse 8, it says, Remember the Shabbat day to keep it holy. I know it says Sabbath, but it's actually Shabbat. And we're told to keep it holy or keep it separate. Uh, it, it should be important, okay? Uh, we have to know how they counted days back then when this was written so that we can know when the Shabbat is because we can't go by... Greco-Roman calendars. We can't go by the sun. We can't go by uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, because back then they did not have those types of days. They just had day one, first day, second day, third day, fourth day, fifth day, sixth day, seventh day, which is Shabbat. So we have to know what what did they use to start off the count. Okay, where did they start from to come up with a first day, or a second day, or a third day, to get to the seventh day, which is the Shabbat? Okay, I'm going to go into the scriptures for that. All right, we're going to start with, uh, first, oh, first I want to cover Exodus 31. Exodus chapter 31. And I don't know why, I can't remember why I got this in my notes. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Starting at verse 12. Uh, let's see. 
And Yahuwah spake unto Moses, saying, Speak thou unto the children of Yasharal, saying, Verily my Shabbats ye shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that ye may know that I am Yahuwah that do sanctify you. Okay? Verse 14, we're still in Exodus chapter 31, verse 14. Okay. Ye shall keep the Shabbat therefore, for it is holy unto you. Everyone that defileth it shall surely be put to death. For whosoever doeth any work therein, that soul shall be cut off from among his people. Verse 15. Six days may work be done. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. But in the seventh is the Shabbat of rest. You're supposed to be resting on the Shabbat. So you rest, relax, okay, chilling out. You ain't going running around all over the place. Okay. You're not buying and selling. You're not working your butt off. You relax, you rest. Okay. Uh Holy unto Yahuwah, whosoever doeth any work in the Shabbat shall surely be put to death. That's verse 15. Uh, verse 16. Wherefore the children of Yahshua shall keep the Shabbat to observe the Shabbat throughout their generations for a perpetual or constant covenant. That means it's not supposed to never stop and never end. It's perpetual. It keeps going on and on and on from generation to generation. We're supposed to be keeping the seventh day as Shabbat. And verse 17. It is a sign between me and the children of Yasharal forever. You see that? Forever. That means you ain't supposed to give us some New Testament and just say, well, Saturday. We're going to keep the Shabbat on Saturday. When they didn't even use a Saturday back then. There was no Saturday. And you had day one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. All right. So, uh, yeah, it says forever. For in six days, there, you, there it is again, six days. Okay, Yahweh made the heavens and the earth. And on the seventh day, he rested and was refreshed. All right. So now I'm going to some more scripture to help us understand what they did back then. How did they even start off? I mean, did they start off... Uh, with the sun coming up one day and just say this is going to be the first day of the week or something. I mean, how did they start? And that's what I try to ask people sometimes. I tell them, I say, if you're saying that a certain day is the Shabbat, how did you get to that seventh day? What was your beginning? How did you begin your week or your month? Okay. All right. Now we're going to go to 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 23. I always use uh, Second Kings because it's a very good example of how they actually kept up with days. Day one, day two, day, day three, or the third day, or the fourth day, or whatever. So we're going to go to uh, Second Kings uh, chapter 4, and I'm going to read verse 23. And he said, Wherefore wilt thou go to him today? It is neither new moon nor Shabbat. And she said, it shall be well. Okay, so you had the new moon, then the Shabbat, which came after the new moon. Now, the new moon apparently is, is just now coming. It's just starting. And after the new moon, at some point, there's a Shabbat. Hmm. Okay, let's look for some more scripture. Now we're going to go to 1 Samuel chapter 20 verse 5 now remember the new moon came first according to scripture then shabbat all right so now we're going to go to uh first samuel chapter 20 no no first i'm gonna start with chapter 19 uh verse 24 and he stripped off his clothes also and prophesied before samuel in like manner and lay down naked all that day and all that night. Notice it is now night time. Wherefore they say is Saul also among the prophets? Now we're going into verse uh, chapter twenty. Uh, now we're gonna to go to verse 
First Samuel chapter 20 verse 5. And Dawid said unto Jonathan, Behold, tomorrow is the new moon, and I should not fail to sit with the king at meat, but let me go that I may hide myself in the field unto the third day at even. Now I want you to notice, before this verse, it, it, had, already be, it, it had already got dark, okay? And apparently, Dawid saw something that let him know that the following day, when the sun come up, it's going to be the first day of the new moon, okay? And we already know that it was evening, uh, Saul prophesied until it got dark, Dawid was already on the run, he went to go meet Jonathan, and when, and when Dawid met him, he said, uh, tomorrow is the new moon. So apparently he saw something, which is probably the moon as it was setting. If you ever spot the uh, moon, you're going to see it. It's going to be very short. This last one that happened on 8-8-13, uh, on, uh, August the 8th, it was very short, I think maybe 10 minutes, and then it went down uh, not long after the sun. So that means that the following day, the ninth, is the first day, is the first day of the new moon. Okay, so the new moon uh, is, is coming, and he's saying that, he says, Let me go, that I may hide myself in the field until the third day at even. So this he's saying he's going to hide until the third day after the new moon. So you got your new moon, and then you got three days after that new moon day. So you're going to have new moon day and then three days. Okay. They're so going to put you four days out. That's what uh, Dawood is telling him here. Now we got um, uh, even verse 18. We're still in 1 Samuel chapter 20 verse 18. Jonathan said to Dawood, tomorrow is the new moon. Thou shalt be missed because thou seat will be empty. All right. Uh, verse 24. Dawood hid himself in the field and when the new moon was come, the king sat him down to eat meat because that day is a special day. The, that day is a, a, a you're supposed to have a feast. That's the feast day. It's kind of like a Shabbat. Okay, it's the new moon day. All right. Uh, verse 27. After this new moon day feast, okay, the new moon has came. We, this is the day of the new moon. Verse 27. And it came to pass on the morrow, which was the second day of the month, the second day. Okay. Now, month in the Hebrew also means moon. Moon also means month. I already talked about this in some of my other videos. I'll be happy to show you in the Strong's Concordance how that you're going to get the same number when you try to look up the word month and when you try to look up the word moon. All right, I'm in my little Strong's Concordance here. Uh, the word month uh, in the Hebrew is going to give you uh, 2320. All right. Uh, 15th day of the first month. Okay, 2320. Let's look up look up our moon. We're going to look up moon. I'm going the wrong way. Okay, 2320. There it is. I found it. Moon. If you look up moon, and you look up in First Samuel, got to look at this. Look at the scriptures. See what First Samuel. See what. See what number give you. Twenty three twenty. That is for moon, just like month. Month is over here. Month. Okay. Uh, you look in any of these for the month. It's gonna give you the same number. Twenty three, twenty. Okay, there it is. All right, so you look in your Strong's Concordance in the back, and you look up uh, 2320. Let's see if I can find it right quick in the Hebrew. Let me turn here so I can find 2320 right quick. All right, 2320, right there. What does that say? Let me get 
get my focus right there it is nice and clear month month new moon see that kodash kodash okay new moon by implications a month so month is moon moon month when you see month is moon all right so when you see in scripture when you see in scripture where it says second day of the month is the second day of that moon so you use the first sighting of the moon as your starting point for a week a month a year whatever okay you gonna have so many cycle moon uh lunar cycles in a year okay but the second day of the moon lets me know that there's going to be a seventh day of the moon so if i use the first sighting of the moon and we know that uh let's see where it says tomorrow is the new moon if we start from the new moon day and then we count we you have that new moon day feast okay the new moon was come they sat down to eat meat because there was a feast on the new moon day and then you count uh, uh seven you're gonna have six working days according to the commandment you're gonna have your new moon day where you're gonna have a feast and then you're gonna have six working days okay then you're gonna have the seventh day which is going to give you the Shabbat. It's going to be eight days altogether. Because the first day is going to be the new moon feast. Where you're going to sit down and eat meat. Then you're going to have six working days according to the commandment. So now we're in Exodus again. Exodus, we're in chapter 20. Alright. And when it says, remember the Shabbat. To keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor. Now your six days, like I said, is going to be after the... Uh, the new moon day you're gonna have your new moon day where you're supposed to have a feast day you're gonna you're supposed to blow your trumpet your uh shofar okay and then you're gonna have six days of work then that seventh day but the seventh day is the shabbat of yahuwah thy power almighty one or judge or god okay in it thou shalt not do any work okay so nobody's supposed to be working Okay, there it is again, six days again. Six days, Jehovah made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that in the mirrors, and rested on the Shabbat, or seventh day. Okay. So I hope I hope that uh, helped clear up exactly how to know when the Shabbat is. Like I said, I already got videos on the lunar Shabbat. You can just go back and look at those videos. You have to you have to spot the moon, and you have to go by the lunar cycles of the moon to even know when the Shabbat is, because it's not Saturday. You can't just pick every Saturday and call it Shabbat. Also, I want to uh, make a point right quick, and then I'm going to go ahead and stop this video, because I'm already in 28 minutes in. But we got people that are getting confused because they're trying to say that the, the Shabbats are not lining up with the feast days. But the feast days are separate uh, days this beside the Shabbats of Yahuwah. So you got the Shabbats of Yahuwah, and then you got the feast days that are separate from that. Okay? Uh, that is in Leviticus. And uh, let me see if I can find that right quick. Leviticus chapter 23. It talks about the, uh, the Passover. Uh, uh, six days shall work be done in verse 3 but the seventh day is the Shabbat of rest a holy convocation you're not supposed to do any work okay, in all your dwellings then you got verse 5 where it says the 14th day of the first month or the first moon in the evening is Jehovah's Passover then on the 15th day is unleavened bread these are separate from the Shabbat of Yahuwah then you're going to count you're going to look at uh, verse 15 where it says and he shall count unto you from the morrow, after the Shabbat, from the day that he brought the chief of the wave offering, seven Shabbats shall be complete. Okay? Even unto the morrow, after the seven Shabbats, shall ye number fifty days, and ye shall offer a new meat offering unto Yahuwah. Now, here's the thing. You got to also read verse 38. Okay? Leviticus chapter 23, verse 38. Well, actually, if you read verse 37, you find out that this is talking about all of the feast. The, the, the set feast Then you read verse 38 It says this Beside the Shabbats of Yahuwah 
okay? And beside your gifts, or other than your gifts, and beside all your vows, and beside all your free will offerings which ye give unto Yahuwah, okay? Also on the 15th day of the month, or the moon, all right? When ye have gathered in the fruit of the land, ye shall keep a feast unto Yahuwah seven days. On the first day shall be a Shabbat, and on the eighth day should be a Shabbat. See, the eighth day is the, the eighth day from the first day of the new moon. Because you, you got your feast day, the new moon feast day, all right, where you sit down and eat, blow the show for all, you're going to have a feast day. Then six working days, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then you're going to have, on that seventh day, after the six working days, seventh day Shabbat. All together, that's eight days. That's why uh, I just read in verse 39, Leviticus chapter 23, verse 39, that you got the eighth day shall be a Shabbat. Okay? Numbers don't lie. Okay? You can't mess that up. It's giving you exactly eight days because you're going to have your first day, which is going to be your new moon day, then your six working days, okay? And then you're going to have your Shabbat. Then you're going to have six working days and then Shabbat. Six working days, then Shabbat until the moon is gone. So I'm going to cut this video short and I'm going to have to make another video and get into this some more. Uh, we're still dealing with the covenant, each individual commandment, going into it in depth so we'll know exactly how to keep the covenant so that uh, we can uh, be pleasing to Yahuwah, so that, so that he can be pleased with our lives, so we can be redeemed as a nation and, and, and come out and be successful. So. Yeah, going into the covenant. I hope y'all enjoying this series. I'm really trying to get into it because we we got a lot of people that don't really understand the covenant. They think that the entire Bible is the covenant. They think that we're supposed to be under a new covenant. It's just a whole bunch of stuff that's so confusing. Nobody's never really taking the time to really break it down and explain it. So that's what I'm trying to do. This elder young one, I'm out.